Hello and welcome to Diaspora Digital Media. My name is Ron Palm Jr. and it is time for education and schools. Today is a unique day because we are looking at the aspect of education in uh, formal and informal settings that has affected every aspect of life. It doesn't matter whether you are in the developed countries or the developed, uh, developing economies. You need this trade, you need these skills. We're talking about ICT, Information and Communication Technology. And the guest for today, Mr. Joe Atwey of the Atwey Coding Academy, University of Nigeria and Google Campus. Mr. Atwey, you're welcome to DDM. Thank you. Now, without wasting much time, we are looking at bridging the gap. Let's know you first of all, sir. Who is Mr. Joe Atwee? Okay. Um, accountant by training. I spent my career working in the upstream oil and gas industry in Nigeria and some expatriate uh, postings. And um, in June last year, I turned 60. And uh, the kids, who are no more kids, haven't grown and left the home, I needed to think about, uh, you know, what, what legacy, what next? What legacy am I going to leave? Uh, because my age had already passed the, the life expectancy. And uh, through a process, I don't know if you have the time to hear the process by which I came to this, but through a process, I came to the fact that we needed to position our children to be able to compete in a, de a tech in a future that will be dominated by tech. So that's the genesis of the Coding Academy, um, to, pro to provide digital skills to the so many smart young people in Nigeria, so they're able to compete in the future. That is interesting. That's interesting, sir. So um, you are not in Nigeria. Why bring the Coding Academy to Nigeria? Well, there are many reasons. Like I said, you know, maybe I need to tell you the process by which we came to that. Uh, so there's a story to tell. Um, I have a son who actually, you know, uh, started schooling in Nigeria. He went to Corona Ikui for primary school and spent two years at Corona Secondary School, Agbara, in Lagos. And uh, smart kid, I'll give him that. But the truth is that uh, in both schools, he was, he was never first in his class. Mm. And then he went to boarding school in the UK and went to the, I went to London School of Economics to read economics. And as an accountant father, I was thinking he was then going to go to an MBA. But he said, mm. no, he was switching to software engineering. So that was the first time I knew, you know, that it was actually possible to make that kind of a switch after a first degree without going back to get a, an undergraduate degree in engineering or something like that. So he switched mm -hmm. and went to do a master's in machine learning and artificial intelligence at University College London. Um, at the end of his program, uh, a US company came to their school to hire interns and they had, he was one of those chosen. And that's how he relocated to the U.S., where he is now. He's in Silicon Valley, uh, making a good career for himself. So at 60, like I said, given that both here and the sister have left home, I was asking myself, you know, like I said, he's a smart kid, but he wasn't the smartest in his class, which mm. tells me that there are many, many smart kids in Nigeria. 
the difference between them and him is that they, they didn't get the opportunities he has had. So if I could spend my retirement in creating as many opportunities for those smart kids in Nigeria, like my son has had, many of them, if not most of them, will do well, as well as he has done for himself. That's my belief. So that's the reason we set up the academy in Nigeria, to provide those opportunities for the, for the young Nigerian smart kids who don't have this opportunity. Wow, that is very thoughtful of you. Now, um, what and what do you do at the Atwe Coding Academy? Well, there are two. It's actually a tech hub, so there are two okay. primary things. To do. There's a physical class at the University of Nigeria Nobu Campus. So, students who live in Enugu or its environs who can attend the physical class and smart enough to pass a very tough entrance exam can attend a physical class in Enugu. We, in addition to that, we have a, a learning management system that allows the academy to teach students virtually. So actually, any Nigerian kid who again can pass the tough entrance exam who has a laptop and internet access can attend those classes. So they are both virtual and uh, like uh, physical classes. Exactly. There's a physical mm -hmm. class if you're physically in Enugu mm -hmm. and virtual if you're anywhere in the world, really. You know, uh, you have a laptop and internet access. That's great. How affordable? Is it for the ordinary Nigerian to be part of? <laughs> it, just, it just hits the nail on the head. It's a six-month program. All the courses mm -hmm. we do. Basically, the six-month program that costs 200,000 Naira per student. You know, mm. less than $100. But, but, and I think this is the place I should say this, the fact of the matter is that 90% of the kids who need this opportunity can't have 100 k You're absolutely right. That's, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the reality. So, you know, what we have then taken upon ourselves as, a, as the academy, not just me, uh, the management of the academy itself, is to reach out, you know, to people and share those vision with them. We don't ask for donations to the academy. We ask that you train the kids. We have a long list of qualified students who can get access because of the fees. We can only train, pay for those we can afford, you know, and there's a limit to an individual's financial capacity. Mm. Uh, we are talking to corporate organizations. We are talking to my, you know, people in my network, friends, classmates, uh, business associates, to train some of these kids. Pay for one. Pay 200K mm. for a kid. Pay for your cousin. Pay for, if there's a smart kid in your village, you know, that has a laptop and internet access, pay 200K. Let them get a chance in life. If you don't know somebody to pay for, who we'll recommend, you know, like I said, we have a database of smart kids that need those training. We are talking to corporate organizations, uh, same thing. Yeah. yeah, it will take uh, some assistance from philanthropists around to get that going for the, the volume of Nigerian students who, you know, would need to have such training. Now, we, we know about the, the, the cost and the duration. Uh, what about the, uh, some, give us some of the courses uh, that you train them on. Okay, the, um, before I get to name them, I'll tell you the thinking behind it, okay? So that you yeah. can make sense to a listener who is not familiar with tech. And the goal is to give those kids 
skills they can use immediately they graduate in the marketplace. They are remote work jobs that enable graduates of these programs to work while in Nigeria for international IT firms. So you go to, you know, site like Upwork, you can display the projects, which is part of what they will come out of when they graduate. They're going to have a deck of the projects they've done. It's not an academic program. It's a skill acquisition program. Mm -hmm. They're going to be able to prove what they can do. And then people anywhere in the world can then hire them for a week or per project or for a month. Or for, you know, say, do a defined work for me for an X amount of dollars. Our contention is that any of these graduates who can earn $500 in a month working remotely from Nigeria will be far, far better than many of their contemporaries working, working in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that also then helps to reduce this, you know, youth unemployment and underemployment that we see. We should be worrying people like us because if this unemployment trend continues, we're going to have millions of young idle hands. And the devil always finds work for idle hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I take that back to your question, so we are focused on those, as we are starting off, we are focused on those uh, courses where we know there is a huge demand globally, back-end back development, front-end uh, development, cybersecurity, da data analysis. Now, what also distinguishes us that in addition to those technical skills, we include a personal development program. So in six months, the person is not just getting technical skills, he's also getting the soft skills on how to position themselves, how to brand themselves, you know, mm. how to market themselves. Yeah. Uh, most people who have technical skills tend not to have those soft skills. So they're going to have that also, mm. which will also hopefully, fingers crossed, make them apart when they get in this competitive remote work. Mm. So it's, it's more of getting the technical know-how and then also being equipped to uh, fit into the marketplace to, to have a competitive uh, advantage, some sort of preparations for employability, engagement. Uh, that's quite, uh, yeah, 200000 is worth it. <laughs> All right, so... What's the minimum qualification? Software engineering is, you know, programs are expensive. It's just mm. the reality of life. Yeah. It, okay. Somebody has to pay for it, unfortunately. It's either I pay for it or you pay for somebody or some corporate organization. Mm. You know. Yeah. Quality software engineering programs are expensive. Yeah. So now, what's the minimum qualification for one to seek for the exam? You have. Um, you have to be secondary and you have to finish your first degree or you're just a genius. Is there any academic qualification before one can try? This is, uh, this is not an academic journey. It's a skill acquisition. It's a digital skill acquisition journey. So if mm -hmm. you are 16, in my view, mm -hmm. or 60, and you can pass a rigorous testing process, mm -hmm. then we believe you have the the logical thinking, problem-solving capacity to undertake the program. So it's a function of uh, your logical thinking and you know problem-solving capacity. It's not a function of age or whatever academic program you've done in school. Mm. Well, that's great. Um, so now, have you graduated any students yet? No, Any, not yet. Uh, okay. No, no. This, yeah, we we. If I would just finish testing by March one, the first set of our students will be resuming 
Remember, it was June last year. I, I turned sixty. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So the vision and the fact we are here has happened between July last year and today, and that Man. involved you know building building the infrastructure. I don't know if you've seen the pictures or the videos. Building the infrastructure at the University of Nigeria and Ugo campus. Well, uh, going by the structures I saw, that must have been a very quick and delicate exercise. That's uh, really beautiful to to see. And uh, both of you, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I feel like I my, the congratulations should go to the staff of the academy, led by the country manager, actually. They were on ground, you know. They just took the vision. Whatever you saw there was them, you know, and like I said, led by the country manager, taking mm -hmm. something that was an idea in my head and creating, you know, what you've seen. So I give them the kudos. Yeah. Now, uh, where do you see the, the coding academy in the next two years? Part of our strategy, you know, like I said, also, you know, poverty is part of the limiting factor for many of the students. So it's easy to say, okay, if you have a laptop and internet access, we can train you virtually. But just like many can't afford the 200000 many also can't afford a laptop. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are also speaking, and there's a limit, you know, it, everything that's happened to date is comfortable you know, from mostly my personal resources. A, a few friends have chipped in substantial sums in the process. We acknowledge them and uh, thank them a lot. But there's a limit, you know, to what personal resources can achieve in the pool of the problem we have, the youth challenge we have. So we're speaking to people that just as we build this, you can come to the University of Nigeria Nuku Campus and see what we've done. We can help you do that anywhere else in the country. At no fee. We are not charging anything. We're just sharing your, our vision with you. You want to do it in Kano, Kaduna, uh, in Noweri. We will at no cost. As long as you fund the, the we will do it. Brand it whatever you want. You know, this is not a money-making venture for us. It's a legacy mm -hmm. thing. And we don't need mm. to have our name, you know, on the academy. But as whatever and wherever anybody can see that they can provide these opportunities to these numerous smart kids, that's enough for us. And if you want us to run it for you so that you don't go through the learning curve we've gone through, we will run it for you too. But, you, you know, you've got to fund it. Funded is a big challenge. So we're you know, saying to some banks, why don't you set up you know, XYZ Bank Digital Scholar Scheme? Mm -hmm. Focused on funding the kids. If you provide the funding, we'll run. if you want to set XYZ Bank Coding Academy, we'll set it up for you. If you just want to fund the kids, you know, fund our kids. We'll have a long list of kids who have passed the test who, who need sponsors. Mm -hmm. So my point is that we are flexible. We think that this is something that should be replicated all over the country. You can't mm -hmm. have too many of them. Mm -hmm. This is the mm -hmm. future. But funding is a challenge. The biggest limiting factor, you know, to scale this is funding. Well, to get a vision like that functional, I want to start one in, in um, just south. In Plateau State, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's the idea of what I need to put together? I have a piece of land already, probably three, four, five plots of land. Uh, what will I need to undertake such a venture? Because it's a bit vague from the outside. I, I would have, I, I would think that you would need to put some machines, some technical stuff available, get the qualified manpower for the training. How much would that cost me? If uh, well, it, it depends. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to answer that question of how much will it cost in a different way. Good. Uh, what it will take. 
And um, and I'll tell you why I'm reluctant to put a Naira figure to it. First, I get that. The virtual class. We have a virtual classroom at the University of Nigeria that seats 30 students. We have two cl classrooms like that. But at least you need a minimum, a class, a 30-seater classroom. Mm. You would have seen the pictures of our classroom. So it's got to be comfortable, you know, uh, it's got to be temperature control so that their brains, you know, can work. It means that, you know, <laughs> by the power facilities, you know, we have solar in addition to, you know, uh, public power supply at our academy. So it requires 30 desktops. It requires the, you know, uh, the training facilities for the learning management scheme. Uh, so I've talked about the classroom. If you don't mm -hmm. have a building already, then at least you have to build one. The cost is different. Mm -hmm. If you have somewhere or a university or a higher institution where you can lease, you know, a 30 classroom, whatever number of classroom you want to concentrate on, it, the cost is different. But then you need to equip it with the desktops, with the learning management skill uh, system that will enable the teachers to teach both the, the kids in class and virtually. You, you, know, you need internet access. We are using Starlinks. Uh, it's expensive. Mm. We, you know, uh, um, so in terms of what you need physically, these are the main things. Now, right. the reason I'm reluctant to give you a number is that back in June when this was still an idea and I began to talk to a lot of people I knew in the industry some, you know, who are actually running coding, there are a few coding academies in Lagos hmm. talk to people who were already running one they gave me ideas of what it would take to start the budget I had in July of last year, I'm sorry to say, as of today, mm. we we'll double that. Yeah. The, the crash in dollar raise, the high rise in prices, inflation, have all combined to make it cost us twice as much as we initially budgeted. Mm. Hmm. So yeah. it's difficult. I can only tell you what needs to be put in place, and whoever else then needs to do it, we'll, we'll have to do a market survey for what those things will cost at whatever point in time they are ready. Yeah, that's we'll that's quite it necessary. Just to give you a working idea, as I speak today, we spent in excess of fifty million naira building yes. building all those. You know, nice looking stuff you saw in the pictures mm -hmm. and the video. <laughs> oh wow. But but like I said also, we we our facility was the an old the old, the basement of an old building at the university that had not been used for a long time. So we actually mm -hmm. started from scratch, you know, restructuring it in to looking like a tech hub. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that you might find an already well-defined accommodation where you just pay a lease. That will reduce the cost. That's why it's difficult mm -hmm. for me to give you, you know, Naira figures. Yeah. It, just, it depends on what you find. It depends on when you are ready. It depends on mm -hmm. what the Nigerian economy is doing inflation-wise. Now, it's <laughs> it is a... <laughs> A work in progress, uh, kicking off March uh, 2024. When will you breathe a sigh of relief that, okay, you're happy with what is done so far? At what point? Oh, already. I'm happy, to be honest. I, <laughs> the, the work and, the, you know, fulfilling that vision doesn't end. Mm. Because every six months, we are going to graduate a new set of, you know, kids who we would have given an opportunity to go into the world and compete. Uh, I'm happy. Like I said, 
June last year, less than a year ago, mm. you know, less than nine months ago, this was just a vision in my head. And here we are, in two weeks' time, students would actually be in class. Mm. Mm. So, you know, and I can't say it more than enough. The, <laughs> the, the management team on ground in Enugu have been exceptional. You know, there are some exceptional people in Nigeria. You just have to find them. They've been exceptional. Mm. They've been an idea, you know, and built what we are saying today in less than nine months. Yeah, just before we wrap up now, do you think the government can key into a project like this? Do they have the capacity? Uh, in fairness to the government and the Minister for Communications and Digital Economy, they, they are working along these lines. But, you know, government is slow. Yeah. So we're engaging with them too. And we've shared with them what we are doing, where we are. Uh, they have the same pictures you've seen. And uh, our understanding is that shortly they may engage us directly to understand how we can collaborate with the ministry. You know, um, there are pockets of places in government who understand that this is the future, really. Uh, but government is slow. Mm -hmm. we, we are selling these ideas. There are people in government. They are, like I said, there are pockets of places in government. The Ministry of uh, Trade and Investment, for instance, you know, talked about a digital, a Nigerian digital export scheme, NAPTEP. Mm -hmm. um, we've also gone and talked to them of how this can work. But like I said, government is slow. Mm -hmm. um, whether it happens so, or not. Yeah. But optimist, you know. Yeah, I won't be here if I'm not an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep moving, hoping that, you know, some support will come either from corporate organizations or from, you know, like I said, a few of my friends have been very supportive, that they mm. keep supporting, you know, and that comes to the table and train some of this, you know. Okay. Well, that's, that's great. That's brilliant. Um, now, um, on the final notes, um, any word of advice generally? Let's start with uh, students, parents, and philanthropists. No, you know, we, we need to think strategically. It's not just students, parents. As a country, we need to think strategically. We need to ask ourselves, where would the world be, say, 10 years' time? In 10 years' time, you know, uh, crude oil probably have gone in the way of coal. We need mm. to think about that. Crude oil could possibly have gone the way of coal. Abundant, available, but not being used as it was being used in the past. Mm. So, and the kids who are 10 today will be 20 in 10 years' time. future do we want to create for them? Because they can't live outside of what the global economy looks like. Definitely. And if the global economy, regardless of where it goes, will be driven by tech. We are having this conversation, you and I, located in different parts of the world because some back-end engineers have engineered what is running the system in the back-end. Hmm. So if I can train the smart Nigerian kids to be able to run that, then I'm giving them an opportunity to compete globally in 10 years' time when there's no crude oil or the crude oil revenues are like 10% of what they are today. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So whether you're a parent or you're a student, if you are 16 or 18, you need to be thinking about this. 
If you are in government, you need to be thinking about this. Is that is there bring each naira I can save instead of traveling first class? If I, as a government official, travel the economy, would it save two hundred thousand naira to give a poor kid a chance to be prepared for tomorrow? Mm. That's a very good question and a very fine place to end it. Uh, Mr. Atwey, once again, thanks for making time for, to be on uh, Diaspora Digital Media. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I wish you the very best of luck, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've been with uh, Mr. Joe Atwey who is the founder of the Atway Coding Academy. We're talking technology. 10 years ago, we had typewriters. We had people, you know, going to work, always using transportation. And communication years ago was good, it was online. But today we know that it is different. You may not be able to exist and function optimally in the next 10 years within the global sphere without personal ICT knowledge, digital skills. Just take a look at four years back, COVID-19 was a big eye-opener. People start working from home. Do you have the skills? If you don't, does your child have that skill? So one of the greatest things and legacies we could leave following the footsteps of Mr. Joe Atwoy. Encourage and do all you can to ensure that not only you or your children, but people around you are trained, have some form of digital skills that they can function well in the future. For corporate organizations, there are a lot of smart kids, kids in uh, Nigeria doing very well, but unfortunately because openings like this may not be open to them, we may not have them, we find a lot of Yahoo boys here and there. You could put a part of your social responsibility package into training two, three, ten, or even one, and I'm sure you would have made, you have done Nigeria a lot of good. With that, I'll say thanks for making time to be with us, and uh, Catch us next week, same time on education and schools. I remain yours, Ralph Palm Jr. Thanks for you.